Welcome back to another episode of Vegan Proteins Muscles by Brussels Radio. My name is Danny. And I'm Giacomo. And this is our 81st episode. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks so much for continuing to tune in. We really appreciate you. Without you listeners, we don't have a reason to do this. Speaking of doing this thing, this is our first episode in our new office, which is pretty cool. This is the first thing we've recorded, period, since we've moved, be it podcast or video or anything. This is the first thing that we've recorded at all here. So hopefully the sound is okay. We th- I thought that there wasn't much of an echo in here, but now that we now that we're actually recording, I can feel a little tiny baby echo happening. So we gotta put some stuff up to suck that up in the future. But in the meanwhile, we'll deal with a little bit of crappy sounds. We also now live a literal stone's throw from the highway. We lived close to the highway before, now we live really close to the highway. So we're gonna see how that turns out in the sound here as well. But even if you guys can hear it, I don't think there's anything we'll ever be able to do about that. So hope you guys like traffic sounds. Yeah, I feel like I've gotten pretty used to the sounds. They lull me to sleep at night and I don't really think about it much during the day. The day I moved in here, I was like, oh my gosh, What are we going to do about the never-ending sound of the highway? I know you heard that. Uh, So yeah, we haven't made a podcast in a while because we have been so busy moving. We knew this was going to be a big move, but it has actually turned out to be like an enormous move, like a massive undertaking. And we were silly to think that it was going (laughs) to be easier than it was. I cannot believe it. We have been here for like a month and a half already, which is crazy. And my mom moved in three weeks ago. It was just kind of like the move that would never end. And then once she was here, we had two full households of stuff that we then had to sort through to whittle down to one household of stuff. But we love the house. The house is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, way nicer than anything I would have ever imagined us in, in a bajillion years. So I'm pretty happy with this situation, but it has still been quite an adjustment for all of us. (laughs) Definitely for me. What about the fact that we bought a house on a hill right in the middle of the rainiest history that this state has ever seen? That's interesting. The, we have like water everywhere. I'm not sure what we're going to do about it, but the weather in general has been kind of crazy all around, like speaking to different clients, different people. It's either like super rainy or super hot, but hopefully everybody is enjoying the summer and getting to spend more time with loved ones and doing your thing. Yeah, we also unfortunately uh, suffered a loss. We lost our boy Jerome, who was our oldest dog that was about a month ago and we uh we didn't take that very well we knew that he was old and we knew that he was sick but until you have to make that call yourself you have no idea how hard that is and you know look we're so lucky to work with people who understand how important our animals are to us um, and that, you know, respect animals and were kind enough to just like give us a little bit of, of space and grace to get through that because most, I know most of you guys have been through something similar yourself. Oh, did that suck beyond the telling of it? It hurt to even talk about that publicly. It's kind of frustrating from the standpoint of someone who loves to be creative, but also there are some things that are just somewhat private to you. And at the end though, I think the silver lining was hearing other people's stories who felt courageous enough to share them when we spoke about our loss and hopefully can make you feel less alone and more supported in this community. So we felt it fitting to make this episode today all about not really the surfacey reasons why we haven't created because those are a given, it's pretty obvious. We've been moving, life has been crazy, we're trying to balance ourselves out after this past year and a half, et cetera, et cetera. That aside, it's still what we're creating on the internet and social media and all that and how that affects us and our ability 
to put information out there, what the platform is. Well, you know what? Rather than me judging it, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it, Danny, because I feel like I hear a lot from you, but I think there's enough that I don't know that you probably are saving for a bigger conversation. Why don't you tell us how you really feel about social media? That was Giacomo's code for, Danny, you haven't shut up about this for the last several months. Go ahead and tell everybody how you feel. <laughs> This is a conversation about social media in general, social media and the internet, I guess, in general, and how I personally have been grappling really, really big time, guys, with is this helping us? Is this hurting us? Have we like taken this too far? Like as a society, not just me and Giacomo, but like, I don't want to start a podcast and be like, I hate social media. It's the worst thing in the world. Because when I sit here and think about social media on the whole and all of the wonderful changes that it has brought into my life and the internet in general, my life is what it is specifically because of social media. I met Giacomo on the internet. I met Robert on the internet. Almost all of my clients, uh, who I mostly consider to be my friends at this point, I obviously met through the internet. That's, I work on the internet. All of my friends I made through social media. We found each other on Instagram with similar interests and things like that. And I don't take that for granted. I think that that is the thing that we all do love about the internet and inherently social media. You can find other like-minded people, even when your interests are really, really, really outside of the norm, like vegan bodybuilding is. It feels very normal to me at this point, but the fact of the matter is, it is still very outside of the norm in the general public, I would say. So I don't take that for granted at all. And this is a really big but. I personally feel that as of late, it's like we've taken it too far. It's like we've taken the internet and social media too far. The last couple of months where we've kind of been forced to take a break from social media specifically, because obviously we've continued to work um, and therefore we still spend plenty of time online, but social media specifically, taking a break from that has made me realize how much of my life it was actually taking from me. And the thought of kind of going back to doing that as much as I was doing it before and calling it work, which is what it is for me, has actually kind of made my stomach turn. And that sounds extreme, but that is the truth of it. And I just think that it's, I cannot possibly be the only person feeling this way. I know for a fact, I am not the only person that is feeling this way. And I think 2020 has made more people feel that way than ever before, I want to talk about it. And obviously I wish more of you were here to talk about it with. So I'm just going to imagine you are and just talk to Giacomo. How I felt about it personally, the beginning of 2020, middle of 2020 was creating content, right? For the purpose of distributing it on social media first. That's the chain of command for how we create content, social media, whew, put it out in different ways on your own platform and but continue to put new stuff out on social media. It, it works when you have something to talk about. It works when you have somewhere to be. It works when you're socializing with others. What happened in the beginning of 2020 was the stage was no longer there. Like the, the wall was broken. And now we still had to continue doing this thing without anywhere to be but home, alone, inside. Right. And some of you definitely happen for us. Like we didn't even have the right kinds of props to, to do the things that we used to do when we socialized, but we had to keep doing it anyway. And I think to do that and to not talk about it is just crazy. Am I, ma am I making this clear? I'm trying to. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. Like <laughs> nobody could leave their house, but you still had this whole culture of social media people, personalities, I don't, I don't really know how to describe it. People that spend a great deal of time on social media, staging and faking these photos and videos 
in their own homes to create this illusion that things were going really well, when for most people it wasn't going very well. And we all knew that. Everybody knew that. Don't get me wrong. I actually really enjoyed the permission, I guess, to stay in my house for several months at first because I am a total homebody and I was like, oh my God, I don't have to cancel plans because they're already canceled. This is amazing. Um, but after a while, you know, I think a lot of people were not having a good time. And when you look at the context of what was going on in the world, boy, did social media seem really friggin' vapid on one hand. And then on the other hand, it felt like the only way to connect with anybody at all. I think because of that, so many people spent way more time than they normally spend scrolling, not just social media, but also the news, just headlines, I know I did, just, just scrolling headlines, reading articles, like the amount of time we spent just staring at our phone or our, our computer or our tablet or whatever was, I don't, I haven't seen the data on this, but I guarantee you it was higher than it has ever been. That doesn't even take into account the Zoom calls that everybody was on all the time and how exhausting those were. It felt so much more performative than it already did. And if you guys have been listening to us for a while, you know my feelings about social media have never been sunshine and rainbows. Social media is a lie. It always has been, it always will be. <laughs> but this last year really, really highlighted it. And I just kept asking myself, why am I doing this? Why am I even trying to play this game? And I know the answer. It's because of you guys. It's because I genuinely care about connecting with people that are interested in veganism and fitness. And you know, maybe they don't have friends nearby that are interested in the same thing. And it's about that community that we have been a part of for over 15 years, back when it was much, much smaller and wanting to put out good information that can be helpful to other people. And that's all very, very true. But there were plenty of days where if I had like taken an honest picture and written an honest caption, it would have been like me in my pajamas with my greasy hair, doing my mediocre workout in my garage because I'm not that motivated to do my workout at the moment. Uh, talking about how like, why none of this matters in the grand scheme, like, oh, Look, nothing matters. And that's pathetic. That's upsetting that nobody wants to read that. We don't, <laughs> nobody wants to read that. But also I think some people want to read that because it, it's the truth and it makes you feel less alone. But as somebody who literally coaches people for a living, who spent all of 2020 trying to motivate our group of clients to continue to take care of themselves and continue to move their bodies and eat well and get their sleep on track. And while they were really, really struggling physically and mentally with being locked inside, while we were also locked inside, that has been hard. That has been really, really hard. And I think that a lot of like thought leaders, motivational speaker, fitness influencer people have just been not talking about it. And I think that by not talking about it, maybe we have made other people feel more alone and more isolated and more shitty about themselves because they're looking to this group of quote unquote inspirational people and being like, oh look, they're making the most of this. They're, they're doing the best with this. And if they can do it, I can do it. I don't think that was totally honest. That paired with just the sheer amount of screen time that we all had last year, I feel like it's like rewired a lot of people's brains for the worse. So what's the answer here, right? Because social media is not gonna go away. Yes, there are major downsides to it. And there's this time to talk about how it has hurt people the past two years. Right? However, it's still going to be a means of communication and a way to put information out there. It's not going to go away. As a matter of fact, it continues to morph. I can't keep up with it. There are certain things, like I see my 
colleagues and my friends participating in faster and faster bite-sized clips of sharing things digitally, whether it's through TikTok or whatever. It just seems like it's the next level of how much can we share, how fast, constantly, all the time, whether it's viewing it or whether it's putting your own thing out there. Yeah, well, this is kind of what I was saying by like rewiring your brain. You mentioned the shorter and shorter clips. Our attention spans, I think this is from staring at our phones and consuming these small bits of content. Our attention spans have gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. People are being diagnosed with ADHD at like an unprecedented rate. Now this could just be because, hey, maybe we understand ADHD better and we are better able to diagnose it. That is absolutely possible. I am not an expert in ADHD. So take this with a grain of salt, please. But I wonder, how much of it is uh, based on our habits. How much have we shortened our own attention spans and made it really difficult on ourselves to focus on anything for longer than 15 seconds? It's really intense. And you ask like, what's the answer? Dude, I don't know. I have no idea. And I certainly can't answer this for anybody because you would have to absolutely answer this for yourself. Maybe your experience has been completely opposite to mine. And social media is just an awesome way for you to escape and it doesn't suck you down a rabbit hole or anything like that. Then don't listen to a damn thing that I say. That's fine. It's okay for us to have different experiences. But for myself, I have been asking myself so much recently if I even need to be on the social media platforms that I find to be particularly toxic, like Facebook and Instagram. I think they're super, super toxic in general. There are corners that are wonderful places, uplifting places, motivating places, but they definitely feed you the articles and videos that they think will get the biggest reaction out of you, which unfortunately that's usually not great news. They highlight posts that are like arguments so you can watch people fight about things that are important to you in the comments. Like, oh, what a terrible time. I totally can see how back during the, the Roman Empire, like people would fill up stadiums watching a couple of people fight to the death. I always thought that was like some primitive backward shit, but I actually feel like uh, in the age of social media dogpiling on people for the smallest indiscretion, I absolutely can see how people would do that. I think people are doing it today just in a different way and I don't wanna watch it. So I love making this podcast. This does not feel like uh, social media in the sense of social media. Nobody forces a podcast down your throat like a Facebook ad. If you're listening to this, it's because you want to be listening to this and we appreciate that. I think YouTube is still a pretty fun place to be a creator. Never read the comments, guys. The comments are not a good place, but I think it's a good place to find helpful information as long as you're actually searching for stuff and not just scrolling whatever the recommended is. But Facebook and Instagram, I think, is uh, I think personally for my own mental health, I think I need to bow out of those things because it is just making me feel more and more cynical about the world as a whole. That's just me. I'm sure you feel very differently about that. Mm -hmm. I know you feel very differently about it because you've told me that for the last two months. <laughs> well, I personally, I feel like social media just continues to exploit human behavior and it continues to evolve. And I think you pick your spots and choose your spaces when it comes to it. And that's gotta be enough. The digital world is never gonna disappear. Nope. Human interaction is gonna happen on the digital world. And I hate saying it, but it's just kind of the way it is. And it's like, you can't let it engulf you and you can't control it all. And so you're just kind of stuck in the middle. We'll say yeah. in no man's land, really. And I mean, what to do, right? Like descend into madness and darkness or just disappear because- What are you saying exactly? <laughs> I'm saying like you gotta exist somewhere and- It was you, a joke. I know. I feel like it's a way to exist in society and it's kind of your responsibility on how and when to do that. You know, you don't owe anyone anything. You don't owe a community anything. You don't owe the world anything. And if you need to bow out entirely, like, so be it. Me personally, I feel like that's extreme. I also understand the feelings behind it and around it. Well, I mean, we have talked about this on the podcast before about how like you set timers to restrict certain apps on your phones at certain time. And I think that's a great idea. I think setting all kinds of boundaries is a great idea if you have the discipline to follow through with it. Historically, I have not had that discipline to just not go into certain apps unless I delete them from my phone. But I do think the best thing you can do is be intentional 
about your internet usage, period, because it is designed to suck you in. It's designed to get you to come back. It's designed to get you to scroll for longer, click another link, like another post. Ooh, someone liked your post. Doesn't that feel good? Like that is literally what it is designed to do. I think that we have these people who are absolutely brilliant at getting us hooked on these apps. Brilliant. The world is completely, completely different than it was 15 years ago because of social media and the way that it has evolved. We know these things, you know it's designed to get you to stay on it for as long as humanly possible. You know it, but you still do it. We all know it, but we've all caught ourselves being like, damn it, why am I still, why am I still here? Close it. Or you pick up your phone and you automatically open an app that you didn't want to. Like, dude, what is that? When I started catching myself doing that, picking up my phone and just clicking open Instagram, I was like, holy crap, I did not even want to do that. Why is that? Oh, it's my hand, it automatically did it. No, no thank you. We're grown ass adults. How on God's green earth do we expect children and adolescents and teenagers to be navigating this minefield of mental, I'm not gonna, I will not swear like that, of, uh, <laughs> we got the explicit lyrics thing, right? Yeah, I know, but I'm photo. I'm trying to swear less. My mother yeah. lives here now. I need to swear a little bit less. That's all right. You know, how do we expect kids to navigate this? Do you guys remember what it was like going through puberty? Like that shit was hard enough without social media. I can't imagine trying to navigate just the world while feeling like you need to perform every action of your life for strangers on the internet to get fake internet points, which is all that it really is. I have so many friends that I only know or keep in touch with through social media. So maybe saying, I just need to quit cold turkey and I'll never be back. Maybe that isn't what's necessary, but certainly a break. I think that I need a break from the Facebook and the Instagram for a little bit. I'll stay, still stay on the the client Facebook group and absolutely our Muscles by Brussels Facebook group. So if you're not in it, you should join it. <laughs> if you're using Facebook, if you're, I've said this to some of my clients, they're like, oh, I, should I join Facebook to be in your, in your client Facebook group? And I'm like, no, <laughs> if you are not on Facebook, God bless you. Do not open an account just for this. It's not worth it. We'll email mm -hmm. you if it's something important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think maybe I just need a break. And I just, uh, I think a lot of people would benefit from not just watching other people live their lives on a three by six inch screen that is your phone and maybe like living your own life because it's short. And we have lost so many people close to us in the last two years. We have lost so many people close to us in the last five years, it has been insane. And if there's one thing that I've learned it is that life is way too short for stupid useless shit. You deserve better than that. So if anybody is curious what sparked my final, like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, Jack was gonna be so mad if I bring this up, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, no, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. Oh, uh, it was Bo Burnham's Inside. I have felt really kind of icky about the internet and social media in general. And then a few months ago, Bo Burnham put out his, he's a, he's a comedian. He's a musical comedian is the best way to Which put it. strikes all of the chords like it plays on i had to look up what kind of artist bo burnham was and when i read what danny just described like musical comedian I'm like oh my gosh that is the family that i married into like that is <laughs> that is their shtick that is what they love i was like i have i have no chance no no chance no hope this is what we're going to talk about for a while and anytime another family member comes in it's probably what we're going to talk about because it literally plays on their heartstrings as the type of stuff they live for okay so i have always <laughs> loved bo burnham like he's well i shouldn't say always i wasn't really familiar with him when he was just on youtube i think he's very great i think he's clever i love like that he makes comedy that also touches on real life stuff, yada, yada, yada. He hasn't put out something in a long time. He made a special at his house, which was 
billed as a comedy special. And it was like, oh, I'm gonna film it just in these four walls of my home during quarantine. And I'm gonna write the songs. I'm gonna edit it. It's gonna be a one man show, basically, which I like one man shows usually. As it turns out, this was only like maybe 50% a comedy show. It should have been billed as something else, a variety show, something. And it is not for everybody. So if you watch this and you're like, Danny is a psycho, then I am sorry. It struck every single chord with me. I finished it like with a slack jaw in my lap. It was like, did you just peer into my soul and make a 90 minute special? And after that, I just, I couldn't stop thinking about how much more eloquently and cleverly he was able to express so many of the things that I have been thinking and feeling over the last couple of years. And just like, oh, Jesus, how can one person like have his finger so tightly on the pulse of the zeitgeist of the moment is mind blowing. I believe it was a masterpiece. I'll just leave it at that. I was like teetering on the edge of needing to have this conversation. It was like, it was like I got a swift kick over the edge just by watching it. If that is something that you're interested in, having an experience that might mess you up for several weeks, totally check out Bo Burnham's Inside because if nothing else, it will make you think. For sure. And I think it's important to gain that kind of perspective from others who are bearing their soul because that kind of reflection can cause you to make better choices and to understand how you truly feel a little better. At the end of it, I was like, here's this guy. He's a little bit younger than me. He's wildly successful. One of the best at what he does in the world. If he is feeling this way, it made me feel a little bit better about feeling this way. It made me think about how much of my own thoughts about this, the internet and culture and society and social media, but also mental health in general. You guys know we harp on mental health, but we don't really dive too deep into our own experiences because we don't want the podcast to be about us mm -hmm. and our experiences. Uh, we want to put out information that can be helpful to to you. But suffice it to say, Giacomo and I have our own experiences, you know? And I, and I think that hearing that from other people is very, very helpful. And I think so much of us have spent so much time wearing some kind of a mask to portray some kind of a life, some kind of a, a situation in the name of social media and wanting to appear happy and uplifting and motivating and inspiring that we have actually done a huge disservice to a ton of people who are struggling through their own shit and are only made to feel worse feeling like they're alone because they're the only ones going through this and it's a lie and the less we can all play into that lie the better off everybody would be I think. I just want to see people have a real messy human experience. We have messy lives. Everybody has messy lives. They're not always Instagram worthy. They're not always super perfect. There's not always some neat little, they're not little fables that you can take a message from at the end and be like, and here's the nice lesson that I learned from this horrible disaster that happened to me. It's not always like that. And that is okay. And somewhere along the lines, a lot of us forgot that it's okay to just be messy people having a real human experience. And if this la if you're not feeling that way after this last year, like holy humanity, boy, have we ever been faced with it. And doesn't social media look a little silly and all of that? You know, maybe social media doesn't have to completely go away. Maybe, and it's not going to, like you said, mm -hmm. but maybe it just, maybe we just need to change the way we use it. And that's just something I need to think about more. And I think there's that fear that what will happen if we stop participating and engaging in community or the guilt of do we have to do this? Are we, are we not supporting those who have supported us? I think from that standpoint, it's challenging to make these decisions. Ultimately, Danny, I feel like it will put us in a position where we can put something out there that has more value to it and we can understand what we're actually doing. And I try to frame it like that as opposed to our own personal mental health or our own personal stories. At least that's the kind of way I think about what we can do about yeah. where we go from here. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this podcast is 
not this particular podcast, but the podcast in general, that's like quality content with thought and nuance. And you can do the same thing in a YouTube video, but you are really limited uh, in Instagram or Facebook, or we don't even use uh, Twitter. You're really, really limited in how much nuance you can actually express. How much value can you really put into a tweet? I think if we stop, and this is not just us and our business, I just mean in general, if we stop putting so much effort into creating these superficial little blurbs that nobody even remembers 24 hours from now, maybe we collectively or individually, like you could create something so much more worthwhile for yourself or your life or for others or what have you. Yeah, for sure. I don't know exactly where we go from here, but I'm glad that we're talking about it, especially with this podcast, which is, I think, one of the safer places for us to show up and ship stuff out for the world to enjoy yeah well i, I want to hear what you guys think about this and ironically yes i know i will largely hear what you guys think about this on social media the irony is not lost on me <laughs> but if you are not a social media user email us veganproteins at gmail.com we love to hear from you we always answer you guys when you shoot us emails we just really really appreciate you and we i danny i personally appreciate uh, your patience with us as we kind of work through what I think is going to be the next sort of shift for vegan proteins. And the last time we had a sh- big shift in vegan proteins, it made us 100% better at creating content and value and helpful information for you guys. So I hope that this next shift will only continue to move us in a direction that is better for you guys. completely changing tones here we're moving on to our question and answer segment if i were to go to the gym three times a week saturday sunday and wednesday is it possible to make enough progress to see change i have an extremely busy work schedule and a three-year-old the short answer is yes the long answer is how to do that consistently and feel all right about it when i hear saturday sunday wednesday I think of someone who is a planner and needs their workout scheduled and it's like, oh, okay, well, if I'm only working out on the weekends and once during the week, am I going to be set up for success? The word that I repeat over and over is auto-regulation and all that that means is that you get in your workouts however you can, whether they're three workouts in a row and then not for another four days or whether they're a Monday, Wednesday, Friday or whether they're a Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, it doesn't matter. Three workouts a week on average, however you set that up, is more than enough time to see change. I think that spending 30 to 45 minutes, probably closer to 45 minutes, is realistic to even ideal three times a week for most people. So to answer your question, yes. What I do think will also wind up happening is as you make more room for this kind of work in your schedule, training, that you'll wind up taking care of your hygiene outside of the gym better because your body will demand it of you. So yes, you're extremely busy and you have a three-year-old and no, those things are not gonna get any easier. However, you'd be surprised how much you start to take better care of yourself when your body is demanding recovery. This question is for you, Danny. Are there any reliable scales for measuring body fat, weight, etc.? Well, there are lots of scales that are accurate for measuring weight. <laughs> I would say pretty much every floor scale, as long as the batteries are good, are pretty good at measuring weight, but I, they probably specifically meant body fat. Not really. There's no great scales that you can purchase for in your home for measuring body fat. As long as you take your measurements under similar conditions every day or every time you weigh yourself, you can have a good idea if you're moving in the right direction or not, or moving in the direction you want to be moving or not. The floor scales that use bioimpedance, which is basically just sending electricity up through your body and measuring the time it takes to get back down because electricity travels at a different pace through muscle and fat and water, and that's how it calculates it. The number on that is not going to be very accurate, but let's say you know it says 22% Uh, After you wake up in the morning, after you pee, before you drink your coffee or anything, it says 22% 
And then a week later, under the same conditions, after you wake up, after you pee, before you drink your coffee, you stand on it and it says 21.5%. That is, that means pretty reliably that you have lost body fat. So even if the number itself isn't accurate, the change is accurate. A lot of people get really hung up on what their body fat percentage is. And a couple of episodes back, we actually have a whole podcast about what a healthy body fat is, how much does it matter, how accurately can you track it. So I would totally recommend that you check out that podcast. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Vegan Proteins, Muscles by Brussels Radio. Feel free to check us out on social media, YouTube, Instagram, Mostly Facebook. Giacomo. Just check out Giacomo. Check out <laughs> Vegan Proteins and Muscles by Brussels on all the favorite social media channels. Email us, veganproteins at gmail.com. Go to our website, veganproteins.com, for all kinds of interesting information and helpful tips. Once again, my name is Giacomo. And I'm Danny. And we'll talk to you soon.